Hello Miss Yanti and friends, now we want to present about experimental design. Our group member is me, Keisha, Aditi, and Marcia. So what is experimental design? Experimental design is to give more information about the data and analyzing the data. And also, it can prove and disapprove the hypothesis that created by the researcher. Next is types of experimental design. There are three types of experimental design, which is pre-experimental research design, true experimental, and quasi-experimental. The first one is pre-experimental research design. Pre-experimental research design are the simplest form of research design. These types are observed subsequent to some treatment presumed to cause change. The next one is true experimental. True experimental research is relies on statistical analysis to prove or disapprove a hypothesis. These types is more rely on the statistic analysis. And the third one is quasi-experimental research design. The quasi-experimental research design is research that resembles experimental research but is not true experimental research. The independent variable is manipulated before calculating the dependent variable. Quasi-research is used in a field, settings where random assignment is either irrelevant or not required. Next slide, it's about advantage of the experimental design. There are three advantages in experimental design. The first one is the result is more specific. The second one is cause and effect of hypothesis can be derived so researcher can analyze greater details. And then the last one is when the results are analyzed, they can be applied to other similar aspects. In this presentation, we will explain more about experimental design by using SPSS. SPSS is an application that helps researchers for complex statistical data analysis. SPSS launched in 1968, and in 2010, SPSS acquired with IBM Company. IBM Company is a technology company in New York. And SPSS became the world standard for social science and data analysis. In SPSS, to do experimental design can be used by ANOVA. There are two types of ANOVA, one-tail ANOVA and two-tail ANOVA. Aditi and Marcia are going to explain about ANOVA in SPSS. Hello guys, today I'm going to talk about one-way ANOVA and how to solve it on SPSS. So the one-way ANOVA is also called as analysis of variance. It's to compare the mean of two or more independent groups in order to determine whether there is statistical evidence that the associated popula uh, population mean are significantly different. And to do this, we're going to use SPSS today to find out if uh, how to find out ANOVA table. So first we're going to use one of the sample files available on SPSS, it's called employee data and in this there is uh, gender, the date of uh, admission for employees, then education, salary, the job time and everything and to, and to find the one way or another we go to analysis, we go to uh, compare mean and then we go to one way ANOVA and uh, for this there are two categories uh, dependent list and factor for the dependent list we're going to use current salary as current salary are always uh, dependent on the category of employee and in factors we're going to use employee category because current salary is uh, it's whose mean will be compared between the uh, sample groups and then factor is the independent variable the category of group uh, will define the sample compared and then we go to options we choose descriptive and we choose a uh, mean plot to find the ANOVA table and then uh, we do continue and then okay And then this is the output that we generate from the uh, table. So it first it has a descriptive table. This shows uh, the mean, standard deviation, 95% confidence list and everything. And then uh, the next one is the ANOVA table. It is two between groups and within the groups. 
and uh, it shows sum of square and mean uh, mean square and f f test and then uh, when we go down we have the mean plot it's a visual representation of what we saw for comparing mean here and the points on the charts are the average of each uh, group it matches easier from the table so that's all for one way analysis one way or no analysis and now Marsha will talk about how to do two way analysis on SPSS thank you hi guys it's Marsha and now I'm going to explain about the two way ANOVA so two way ANOVA is uh, pretty much uh, kind of more complicated than one way ANOVA because here we are dealing with two independent variables so in definition the two way ANOVA compares the mean differences between groups that have been split on two independent variables and the primary purpose of a two-way ANOVA is to understand if there is an interaction between the two independent variables on the dependent variable. So yeah, in this case, we are dealing with two independent variables, not just one. And the primary purpose is to see if there is an interaction between those two independent variables. And I'm going to take an example here. For example, you could use a two-way ANOVA to understand whether there is an interaction between gender and educational level on test anxiety amongst university students. So in this case, what are the independent variable here? So the independent variable here is, uh, of course, gender and educational level. And I just want to remind you guys that independent variable cannot be changed. So the test anxiety here, here will never change someone's gender, I mean someone's gender, or educational level. And so the test anxiety will never change someone's gender or educational educational level, right? That means the test anxiety is the dependent variable. And the gender and educational level is an independent variable. And from two way ANOVA, we can see uh, whether there is a relay, uh, there is an interaction between the gender and educational level itself. And now let's move on to SPSS. Okay, so now I'm going to explain on the SPSS. So here I have a data set of a weight loss, uh, of a weight loss. It's about weight loss. So my two independent variables here is the diet type. There's three diet types here. Uh, the first one is non, non-diet, and then Atkins, and then vegetarian. And for the exercise, there's a non, 30 minutes per day, and 60 minutes per day. So those are my two independent variables, and the dependent variable is the uh, numerical value, which is uh, this one is the weight loss. So in this case, uh, what I'm test testing is that uh, how to lose weight effectively, like what kind of diet, and then what kind of exercise, right? And do diets really work? And what about the exercise? And so in order to find out, 90, 180 participants were tested to one of three diets and one of three exercise levels and now we're going to test if the means for weight loss after two months are also the same for diet exercise level and each combination of a diet with an exercise level so that's the thing with two-way ANOVA that we can see the interaction between the two independent variables which are dieting and exercise so let's just go to analyze the output so we go to analyze general linear model univariate i'm going to leave model and contrast as the same and we definitely will need a plot here so that we can see the bigger picture and the numbers on the output of two way and is pretty much complicated but through the plot you can see the bigger picture and you can understand it so here i want to put the horizontal axis uh, uh, on the exercise time wait Okay, this is my previous one. I'm going to remove the exercise time and then diet here. Then we add, okay, we have exercise x diet. And then we, we will need an estimated marginal means uh, because we're dealing with unequal sample sizes here. Unequal sample sizes meaning that on a uh, two way ANOVA data like this, there's of course. Uh, um, the number of people who diets on type 1 and type 2 is of course different like it's each 
of the participant here uh, has a different diameter and some have the same some have the different so we are dealing with unequal sample size here and then yeah we just put exercise diet and the exercise uh, with diet and then we uh, take the compartment effects and choose the least significant difference one and then on the options we only use the descriptive statistic uh, estimated self-effect size and homogeneity test so yeah we're going to do this and okay let's go to the and when we look at the result the plot so this definitely shows here it shows here that the uh the diet with the most weight loss is the vegetarian diet with uh and the higher the highest amount of weight loss is the one who's doing vegetarian diet with 60 minutes exercise per day and besides that and uh, we see we are seeing each line rise steeply between 30 to 60 minutes of exercise per day and then a vegetarian diet always resulted in more weight loss than the other diets and both diet and exercise seem to have a main effect on weight loss like as, as we can see here if we see at the uh, we see the horizontal axis the uh, exercise time uh, as it increases the weight loss is increasing too and for the uh, diet assigned to participant as it increases between the level which is non -Atkins, atkins and vegetarian it also increases the weight loss here as you can see non is the uh, below belowest and then the middle part is atkins and then the highest is vegetarian so it seems like both both independent variables uh, as they increase in the level they are also uh, putting more weight loss so that is the interaction effect that we are looking for uh, by using two way ANOVA and all the results here is uh, pretty much complicated but yeah we'll get to it thank you guys for listening to us